Treats? Tricks! Part 5. A Miraculous Ladybug fanfiction written and narrated by Mira Rose. Artwork by Megumi Watatsuki on Pixiv. You can find a link to Megumi Watatsuki's art in the description box below, as well as links to the previous four parts of this story. If you haven't listened to them, go check them out first. Now then, if you haven't liked and subscribed, you should do that. And if you're listening for something to comment because it helps the YouTube algorithm, put Dracula Hawkmoth. Please enjoy Treats Tricks Part 5. Adrian Agrest as Cat Noir. Cat Noir, the figure bellowed. Give me your miraculous... Bats flew as the figure spread his arms like wings to reveal... Hawkmoth. Dracula edition Hawkmoth. Wow. Of all the things for the girls to be right about tonight, it was this? Seriously, dude? Cat sighed, shaking his head. Is that all you think about? He heard a cackle from across the street, and he and Hawkmoth turned to see a ladybug and Rena Rouge squealing with delight. This is an easy moment, Dracula Hawkmoth said. I get that, but, like, think about it. Do you really want to keep the spooky season forever? Hawkmoth narrowed his eyes. You did this? With a grimoire, yeah. Dracula Hawkmoth sighed through his nose, taking his cape with him as he folded his arms, making him like a perfect cosplayer. How do we undo it? Cat stepped back, stunned. The spell affected your personality, too? Excuse me? The girls are not themselves tonight. Not something he should tell his arch nemesis, but oh well. Myra is too. Cat blinked. He was right after all. Hawkmoth cared about his partner. Was he in an unrequited love like he was? Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. no. Don't humanize him, Cat. He's not a man. He's your enemy. So it's... Affecting the female miraculous holders? Dracula Hawkmoth sighed. It seems so, kid. Huh. Silence fiddled between them, tense and trembling. Teammates. Dracula Hawkmoth held out his hand, and Cat widened his eyes like he'd offered him a viper or a red-capped mushroom. Uh, teammates? Did he hear that right? Come on, kid. For our partners. Cat looked back at Ladybug having the time of her life as Rena blew raspberries at the Akuma victims. Bold of you to say that while making them fight. Dracula Hawkmoth sighed, but kept his hand out. Come on, Candy Cat. It'll keep them out of trouble. Cat swallowed, looking from this man to his hand to his partner, then back into his gaze. Okay. He held out the hand without his ring on it, forcing Hawkmoth to change his. For the girls. For the girls. Hawkmoth echoed, shaking his hand firmly. Where to? Reaching into his pumpkin, Cat Noir pulled out the grimoire and pointed to the page as Hawkmoth's eyes widened. This! I have that. Cat almost recoiled. You do? I'm a collector, boy. How do you think my wife and I got the miraculous in the first place? Mayura is your wife? He, he knew it. What? No. The mood changed like the chilled air between them. I'm not doing all of this for Mayura. This anger, this... A restrained wrath reminded him of his father. Hawkmoth must have lost her too, but unlike his father, 
who secluded himself after trauma and needed therapy, this man chose to terrorize people with it. He weaponized his trauma. It made sense now. He and Ladybug wondered all this time, and now he knew, even if Hawkmoth hadn't told him. And I will do anything for Ladybug. Cat tore his hand away, feeling the loss of this man's warmth like an ache in the morning. Let's go. It's in a warehouse next to the river on the south side. Good. He knew where he meant. His father had some warehouses there as well. Kid. Hawkmoth began as he took off. Kid, you. And then, like something off a fanfiction site, Cat Noir and Hawkmoth flew through downtown Paris together, catching stares and gasps. He couldn't blame them. They were Dracula and a gourd zooming across the Halloween sky. Ugh, of all the nights to do a spell. Here. You got here quick, Dracula Hawkmoth said, landing next to Candy Cat as he hovered in front of a street of warehouses. I know people who use these. Interesting. Is it? All of these are owned by Gabriel Grest. Cat Noir stilled. He knew his father owned some of them, but all? And Hawkmoth used, presumably, one of them? Oh. Although I'll be changing venues after tonight. So we don't go back? My insurance doesn't cover cat burglars, you see. Ah, wait here. Before he could protest, Dracula Hawkmoth left Candy Cat behind. Uh, fair enough, they weren't actual partners, and Cat Noir could respect not wanting the other side to see your secrets. It didn't mean he wasn't going to try and sneak a peek. Not very hero-like, but a cat's gotta do what a cat's gotta do. Why not take advantage of a gourd when you have the chance? Cat Noir floated down the road until he saw a door cracked open and scooted himself inside, pumpkin included. But oh, what was inside took his breath away. This was... a complication. There was no longer any doubt his father owned these warehouses. In front of him was every outfit he'd ever seen his mother wear, displayed on mannequins and in cases like he was at a museum. He must have gotten the wrong door. Yeah, wrong door, wrong warehouse. Dracula Hawkmoth wasn't in here. Cat Noir turned to leave, but one of the dresses, arranged in a flat lay, caught his eyes. Cat remembered this dress. His mother wore that when she and his father came back from a trip two years ago, right before she... Well, he should go. Find the right warehouse or return to the meeting spot. Either way, he needed to find Hawkmoth. But the door clicked shut, freezing Cat's bloodstream as he looked around for his nemesis. No. Was this a trap? Cat flew to the door, but it was locked. Pounding did nothing, and he hadn't a clue as to how to call Ladybug with his lollipop. He might just be stuck in here. Ah, <sighs> jeepers. This was going to be a long night.